How's it going guys? So today we're working on this Jeep again. So a uh, customer came in and said that she had some headlight trouble issues. And uh, while I was inspecting that, I saw some boogers on the radiator. And in this, I guess, episode or video, we'll be talking about, or you know, should be showing you how to replace a radiator on a, a Jeep WK2, uh, specifically in a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, with a 3.6 liter engine but i'm sure that the newer models will be very similar to see how that uh, looks so first one i noticed here if you can tell i don't know if it's a good view or not if you can see that crusty white residue running down all the way down there so this radiator failed on the aluminum side, not on a uh, plastic side. And then on the other side, similar thing. As you can see, there's the signs of white little speckles all over the upper uh, coolant hose. And then if we look down, if I can get around here, you can see that we have a leak right down in there and kind of goes down so let's uh, keep it sweet and short and just kind of to a point let's go so first things first let's disconnect the battery battery is located under a passenger seat on the front passenger seat you just pop the cover right here there's your negative terminal and that's what I'm going to do, is just going to remove the negative and let it hang on the side. Alright, next. So now here, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these uh, covers. To do that, I'm going to use one of these tools. It's like a clip remover tool. You can get it on Amazon anywhere. Just pop it, prop it up, just like that. Like this, you remove five clips on the passenger side. One here, 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 and here. And then also you'll have to remove this little piece right here. Oh, come on, light, get out of the way. It gets clipped into here. So yeah, this just makes it super easy with this one without breaking it. Same thing here. So this side has six clips, just one extra on this side right here. So you're gonna have one here, here, here and all the way here. Same thing here, but on this side, it was already kind of ripped out, so I didn't really bother removing that one. And then, you wiggle it out of place. From here, you carefully remove it. This weather seal under the hood will be also clipped in with these kind of clips into the crossbar. And then, using the same tool, you just do it like this. And I just lost it. Oh no. So that's what it looks like. Anyways, then we just take it off. Like so. And put it in this, put it aside somewhere else. Then we'll use a uh, eight mil socket to loosen this one up and this clamp. Then just pressing the tabby down there, just remove that and give it a quick lift. And it's out. Now you have all this room to work with. So let's see if we can get this radiator drained and remove the sand from the radiator. 
So now to remove this upper tie bar with this one, I've got to disconnect the cable for the hood release. That way you can do it this way. You can pull this like so. And then using little nose pliers, you can guide the cable out of the latch. Then, so this piece right here, cable itself, you can also use your little nose pliers. Same way, just press those little two tabs, as you can see. Just, you can turn this as well. Turn it how you're comfortable. Put the little nose pliers in there. Push the tabs together and just have it come out. Like so. Just like that. Then, realize that we can remove this bar without removing the whole entire thing because we can pop this uh, grill off. Just like so. Like this. That gives you access to the 10 mil bolt on this side, here, here, and then same thing on this side too, same way. Also, you can get to that 12 or 13 mil bolt right here to remove that tie bar. There's one on each side here and then down there. The benefit of not removing this is because you don't have to set it so that the hood still closes properly afterwards because with these two screws on each side it allows you to adjust the latch up down side to side things like that now then we're gonna go and remove 10 mil right here with a bracket for this uh, ac line also another clip for your washer fluid reservoir that way it can, can be detached and you can start untying the tie bar to lift it out of place okay so now since we have this thing lifted out did not come out too easy with this thing being out in the way so these little rubber bushings here and here they do get press fit into that little deal in there to that opening in here so it makes it pretty hard to have it popped out um, so I'm not gonna take off the, the what do you call them, the horns, or whatever the name in English is for it. I'm just gonna disconnect the wires off of it. Just leave it hanging on this side and this side. Come on. He just does not want to come out. Okay, so on this side and this side. Remove them both and just set it aside. Now we get a much clearer picture of what we were working with, and I did not have to remove this guy. All right, uh, let's see. So this whole thing moves with the radiators. Okay. Awesome. Now let's work on getting this guy pulled out. So now to pull this shroud fan out on the side here, you'll see these little uh, brackets that hold it in place. On top, bottom, the bottom just slides in and the top just clips in. So since I've been messing with it, it's kind of off track right here, but generally what you would do is you would press down on this while lifting up the, oh, what do you call it, the shroud fan. So let's see if I can do it with one hand, kind of like this. This side, and then also on this side just like that. Then here, you'll disconnect this fan, uh, power to the fan by pressing down on the tub and pulling it off. It'll be a lot harder than that, obviously. Okay. So now this one just clip back in. 
Ecco. We are removing it. I'm trying to buy with my hand, but one hand doesn't work. Gotta use both. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So now we can get a clear picture of this radiator. Looks like it's been going on for a while. Look at that. Oof. Nice. Okay. Now we will drain the radiator using this little opening right here. I will most likely find a little hose to stick on the bottom here. You just turn it. Uh -uh. It's a little harder for some reason. Should be counterclockwise. And then uh, it'll start pouring out of this little nipple here. Okay, now what you can do is, since I had it drained, the hose popped off, but I just put my bucket underneath that shield and it just drained right in there. So now I just need to have these uh, uh, radiator hoses removed. I already got the bottom one removed. I used this tool right here, some uh, channel locks, just bunch on each side, extended it, pressed them, and just lowered the clamp down. And then with some grit in your hand, we made it like a twisting turning option for it to seal from the water pump outlet here and then it came off. Some cars will be easier, some cars will be hotter. Sometimes you'll end up ripping the hose itself so you have to replace it. That's just how it is. And then on here, same thing, give it a turn, got loose and then just pop it off. Same way. Whoa! Yep, just like that. <laughs> Make a huge mess. <sighs> That's gonna be a wash. Alright, anyways, then to get this radiator unclipped, because it sits as a pair, right down here, you can just press this and it comes yeah. off this little tab. Same thing okay. on this side. Just kind of. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to show you. You just on the bottom here, on the bottom of it, you just press it down, you press it up, and, and it comes off just like that. Okay. Then, what we'll do is we'll loosen this too hard because the AC sits in the channels of the radiator itself. So you just lift the AC up a little bit to separate them up. Okay. Yeah. There we go, so that's gonna work it out of this place. Okay. So 
know, so it could be easier to remove the upper regular hose from the radiator side. So here we have the old radiator and here we have the new radiator. You can get this radiator either off Amazon or off um, AutoZone. AutoZone is about $180, 180 uh, but it does come with a limited efficiency, which is beneficial uh, if you're doing a lot of trips and you want to have somebody local to uh, exchange it really fast at um, AutoZone has them for roughly 90 to uh, 100 or something dollars, you know, but also warranty would be the question there to look at. Like there's $140 yeah, and all that up to 300 something. So I'll put some links in the description so you can check it out for yourself and make a decision whether you want something with the warranty to exchange it for or you can just get something cheaper if you're not afraid of uh, labor. Alrighty, so what we're gonna do is we will take all the bushings and transfer it over from this radiator onto this one. And then go in the reverse order as to assemble everything back. That's it, this stirs to it. New radiators in there. So now we will install the shroud fan back, hook up the wires, and uh, oh, and put the cross beam back and everything else. So 
That's not that difficult that is. Now, let's put the put back on the speed play. By the way, the ratcheting, 10 mil ratchet will <laughs> make wonders for this type of purpose. I'll, uh, I'll put a link. Okay, so we have assembled everything here. I'm about to start filling in with coolants. We'll be using the Xerox G05 formula, or you can also get uh, the dealer uh, specific one. So, but this one's available in my area and it was like uh, 17 bucks for it, so it wasn't too bad. Anyways, uh, I am replacing the radiator cap with this new one. Um, not really trusting the old one because the radiator started to come apart the pieces and stuff like that you know it could be that the pressure that this is supposed to release at is not quite working right anymore i mean the car does have almost 400,000 miles on it now so yep that's about it so as always thanks for watching have a great day